Are we spending too much with fancy red light therapy panels? Or could we save a bunch of money and get the same benefit with a simple flashlight? Let's find out. So the research is well and truly established. Red light therapy or photobiomodulation works. There are literally thousands of studies showing that red light therapy helps with wound healing, collagen production, reducing pain, helping with joint inflammation. I could go on and on. But at the end of the day, it's just a particular wavelength of light. And all these fancy panels do is put out a heap of light at that particular wavelength. Now, if you think back to your science classes at school, you will remember that white light, daylight, the white light we see from flashlights such as this, consists of a full spectrum of light. Green, yellow, red, blues, it's all in there. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of everyday flashlights, torches, spotlights, reading lights, and see how much red light, the therapeutic red light, has been emitted from these, and is it enough to get a therapeutic dose so we don't have to buy these expensive lights? I'm gonna look at them all with my spectrometer. This will show me exactly what wavelengths of light are coming out and also the irradiance or the power output. The research has shown that we need a certain amount of light in the red and the infrared wavelengths for it to be beneficial. So using all this information and my spectrometer, First up, I'm going to test this pocket white LED torch or flashlight. Okay, so we're going to test this about an inch from the sensor. So let's have a look. Okay, so as you can see on screen, uh, this is all the light being emitted from the torch. Obviously, there is a lot in the blue range. Uh, you're getting 450 to say 460 nanometer peak. Bit of a drop off, then your green, yellow into your orange and reds. Now we're interested in the red around your 660 nanometer range. Before I expand on this, I just want to mention this figure here, this EE figure. This is your total irradiance, the total amount of light coming from this torch. It's 210 milliwatts over centimeter squared. To put this in perspective, a, a panel such as your miter reds or your biomax panels, uh, at about six inches, they're putting out, say, 80 milliwatts over centimeter squared. The difference is the panel is, of course, just putting out your therapeutic red, your near infrared wavelengths. This, in this particular reading, is looking at all sorts. It's looking at your blues, looking at your greens, your yellows, everything, right? So you can't really compare them. What you want to do is look at the energy at a particular wavelength. So we can click on 660 here and see that there is uh, 327 microwatts. So that's 0 0.3 milliwatts over centimeter squared. To put that in perspective, a red light body panel will, will be putting out about five to 10 times the amount of energy at that same wavelength. So yes, there is a bit of red light coming from this, However, there's more other wavelengths or the non-therapeutic wavelengths. Could you, at a push, use this for, I don't know, spot treating? You could. However, the treatment time to get enough energy on that particular area is going to be much longer than, say, if you used a red light therapy panel or even like a handheld therapy panel like this. Another thing to note is there is a minimum threshold. If you go too low on the red light therapy irradiance, the power output, there is some research showing you need a, a minimum level, a floor, so to speak, of therapeutic red light to start having an impact on the body. And the other thing I need to point out is the interaction with the other wavelengths. Is all of that blue light in there, for instance, going to negate the benefits of the red light? I'm not too sure, but it is still interesting nevertheless, especially because this costs about 20 bucks. All right, now let's test this reading light. It is actually from Huga Health. I'll put links to all of these products below. Uh, it emits a, a red light on it. Uh, we use this in my son's room if we need to get up at, during the night or he wants a night light. This is a nice red glow that doesn't uh, suppress melatonin uh, and it's not too bright as well. So let's have a closer look at the light in this. Okay, so again, we'll test it about one inch from the sensor. So as you can see, there is only red light coming from this, which is, which is great. Uh, first up, the total power here, 2.3. So it's very, very low powered. To put that in perspective, if you're wanting 10 joules of energy on a particular area for, for skin surface level treatment, you're going to need to use this for 83 minutes, an hour and a half, so to speak. And it's obviously a very small device and it may be so low powered that you're not even going to get a benefit anyway. So I wouldn't really recommend this for treating problems. You can see that the peak wavelength is 634. If we go out to 660, there's actually very, very little amount. Uh, even at your 630, you're still getting a, a much less power from this than we were getting from the battery powered 
flashlight. What about if we use a really high powered torch? Now here I have my hunting spotlight. It cost me about $250, it is battery powered, rechargeable. The batteries don't last very long, but it's great for what I need. I can see the back of our property about 400 yards away with this. Really, really cool. I can tell you now it is extremely bright. The reason why I wanted to include this in the video is firstly because it's quite a high powered LED. It gets pretty warm. There's a cooling heat sink at the top here. It should put out some good numbers. But secondly, because it comes with this red filter. Now this red filter is included for hunting purposes. I won't get into it here, but it should. I'm curious to see what exactly is going on with this on the screen. So yes, there is a lot of light and heat coming out of this. You can feel the heat even as I'm testing it there. The LED is actually way back here, so about three inches from the top lens. So that's where I was testing it. So that's about a three inch uh, testing range. As you can see on the graph here, again, we see that big spike in the blue light drop off and then we start seeing some yellows and reds. We also see some near infrared light out here, which we'll cover soon. First up, I wanna talk total power. Now this was 204 milliwatts over centimeter squared, similar to the reading we saw on this. However, we were testing this quite close to the lens. This one we're testing you know, a couple inches off. The other thing to note here is I tested different points all across the, the face of the spotlight and you're getting about 200 milliwatts at each area. So you're getting a much larger treatment area compared to the, the little torch here. But if we could measure this say an inch from the LED, it would be a lot higher than 200. Anyway, those numbers are irrelevant when it comes to red light therapy dosing. The main metric is how much light is coming out in the red light range. Now, when we go to 660, we're seeing 262 milliwatts over centimeter squared, which is actually a little bit less than what we were getting from this. Again, remember further from the LEDs, lighter treatment area and all of that. So yes, there is a bit of red light here, but there's all those other issues we mentioned uh, earlier with the other wavelengths and, and whatnot. Okay, so now what happens when we put this on? This is simply a filter. All it's gonna do is filter out all the light that's not red. Well, at least that's how it should work. So let's have a look. So as you can see on the screen here, all the blues, the greens, the yellows are gone. All we see is a bit of amber through to red. Now the peak is 620 nanometers, not a well-known wavelength when it comes to red light therapy. We do see 630s, uh, 660 is obviously the big one, uh, but 620 isn't as common. When we go out to 6.30 though, we're still seeing a, a heap of energy at 6.30 relative to the light coming out. And then when we go down to 6.60, we're about 50%, 60% off the peak. Now, what's interesting here, assuming all of this light was therapeutic, uh, 590 through to say 710, uh, we would be getting 30 milliwatts over centimeter squared, which is, which is a decent amount of light. That's what we see in some older generation panels. Uh, however, it is quite a wide range there, you know, up around the 700s and even those 580s there may not be that useful, but still it gives you a better idea of how much red light is coming from this. Uh, whereas previously before without the filter, it was showing about 210. Now we know that, yeah, about 20 to 30 milliwatts out of that 210 is red light. So what does this mean? Well, let's get rid of say the ambers and some of the 700 nanometer light. And let's say we have a conservative energy output figure of say 20 milliwatts over centimeter squared. With that figure, if you're looking for 10 joules of therapeutic light to, to get the benefits from surface level treatment, which is what the research have shown, you'd need to use this for about eight to 10 minutes. Again, remember this is sort of back of the envelope number crunching here, but that does indicate that you could use this high powered spotlight with the red filter for 10 minutes on your face, for instance, to treat, I don't know, that scar or the, the, the scratch or the acne blemishes, whatever. It is putting out a decent amount of red light and, and reasonably good wavelengths. Should you do it? Well, personally, I would much rather use something like this, the uh, Infrared Micro. Lots of these companies have these handheld devices. If we have a look at what's going on with this device, let's say a couple inches from the device itself. There is a big chunk of red light here. The total energy was 42, so that's a good amount of energy. Uh, the peak is 669. Uh, when we go to 660, we're in the middle of that, that um, graph there. 
So there is a lot of energy coming out at the therapeutic range, you know, your 650s through to your 670s, whereas previously we were down over here in your 630s. So something like this, putting out a bit of wavelength than these white LED devices, even if we use a filter. And also it's much larger. It's got a larger treatment area. Plus from a price point of view, these devices aren't too bad. I'll put links and discount codes to all of these products below. But in the meantime, be sure to check out this video where I compare all of these handheld devices. Just know if you are after therapeutic red light, you're better off buying a red light therapy device rather than penny pinching and using a torch.